This Friday, September 27th, will be the last development update we see for Ashes of Creation before Alpha 2. Phase 1 of Alpha 2 launches October 25th, 2024, as you may know, and starts off with weekend testing up until December. And next month, we should really start to see things ramp up. That's already kind of started, as Intrepid is getting their community team ready by bringing on an additional community manager who goes by Nyx. They've hired their content creator ambassador, Adam, so we will hopefully start to see those invites rolling out soon and that program finally launching after almost four years. And after this stream, we have less than one month to go before thousands upon thousands of people can finally jump into the world of Vera. If Intrepid doesn't pull an Intrepid and announce a delay last minute. But as of now, we are going according to plan. This is full copium and Alpha 2 is going to launch on October 25th. So what exactly can we expect in this last big stream before the veil is completely lifted? Well, Intrepid announced that it will be an Alpha 2 launch guide, so to speak. What this means is kind of up in the air, but I imagine it will be giving us a tour of what we can expect on day one. We've seen the list of planned content for what's intended in the first phase through the roadmaps, but all of that is said to be implemented by the end of the first phase, and Intrepid hasn't really confirmed what's going to be in there on day one. But going through the past live streams, we can kind of narrow down the majority of content that we can expect, comparing it to what we've seen in that phase one roadmap. With the world, we have seen lots of the Riverlands. This is obviously a focal point in Alpha 2, and we have seen a teaser two of the Sand Squall Desert, but what we have haven't seen yet or any of the tropics, which although a tropics biome was present in Alpha 1, it's not the same biome. Steven confirmed it was completely built from scratch. It's not going to be what we played in Alpha 1, although originally I'm pretty sure it was said that that tropics area was going to be part of the actual map, aside from the Alpha Zero Island that the majority of that testing took place on. For points of interest, we've seen some sprinkled in the streams. We really don't know what's what or how many we've seen. The day and night cycle has been functional for a while. Seasons have been working for almost two years, and we have seen Carfin and the Citadel of Steel Bloom for dungeons. For dynamic world population, I imagine this means NPCs reacting to the world state. Seasons, for example, where creatures evolve and change based on the weather, like we saw two years ago in that seasonal preview showcase. And with reward tables, the same thing, with resources reacting to the time of day or seasons. We've seen this a few times with gatherables, with the Artisan Showcase last year, and in the Gathering Showcase we got a couple years back. Nodes is really one of the hardest ones to decipher what is or isn't in at launch from what we've seen. We've had at least two nodes mentioned in the Node War stream, aka Mirrolith and Winstead. We saw a Stage 3 node in the Node Showcase along with the Blacksmithing Service building, which was again showcased in the Artisan stream. But beyond that, we haven't really seen a lot of the building types. When it comes to the roads, we've seen the road buffs working in the Caravan stream giving you specific speed buffs, but we don't know if these roads were actually the dynamic roads tied to the nodes leveling or they're just stagnant roads that are always there no matter what nodes progressed. Node citizenship and mayoralship has been present at a very basic function in the node war stream, and before that we saw just the mayoral side of things in the node stream. Everything else though, we've seen bits and pieces of, but there still appears to be a lot to be revealed. When it comes to the races, the Vet, Kalar, and Empyrean are said to be in by the end of phase one. We've seen plenty of the Kalar and plenty of the Vec throughout the last two years of gameplay showcases, but we haven't seen much of the Empyrean since the first Ranger reveal of over two years ago. And we know the Empyreans did go through a rework, which we have seen renders for, so I'm hoping we'll see them, and I would personally be kind of surprised if we didn't, because I was kind of shocked that we were only seeing three races in Phase 1 to begin with, as we've seen lots of concept and lots of renders on the other races in the past besides the Tolnar, so I'd hope those elves at least make the cut for Day 1, while we know the rest of the races are going to be added in Phase 2 and Phase 3. For archetypes, we've seen every single one of these ones that are going to be in the first phase, so it's pretty safe to say that I expect all six of these from the start. I'd expect there to be no surprises there, except for maybe some updated class kits. It's been a while since we've seen the cleric or the tank, and we never actually saw a complete tank class kit, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit more of those abilities in the mix, and whatever this Alpha 2 guide that Intrepid is showing us actually is. Weapons are in the same boat. We've seen the majority of these, if not all of them, at one point or another over the last two years years working in game, so I imagine they will all be present, but that may not mean we see their fully functioning skill trees. Skill trees were something that we really started to see this year, as Intrepid started breaking down the wand weapon type, and we saw a little bit of the 
great sword in the fighter showcase. Steven has even said in the past that we probably won't see every single weapon skill tree at the start, and there may be some duplicates and crossovers between them just to give you a feel for what they intend and a basic idea of how the weapon trees will work. When it comes to PvP, well, we have seen caravans in Node Wars. Flagging has been present in PvP event states where everyone is auto-flagged within the two types of PvP events I just mentioned, but we have not really seen it in a more open world setting, which includes the corruption system. We've also seen nothing on the lawless zones, which are said to be open flag areas in the tropics and deserts, specifically for Alpha 2, until that naval content is finally implemented in Phase 3. We have also seen nothing on Guild Wars either. I'm hoping the majority of these are working from the start, because I personally think PvP is going to be where the real fun is in the first phases of testing, and something I can see myself participating in a majority of the time. With systems and economy, we have not seen water mounts, the mail system, trading, surveying, fishing, hunting, gear enchantments, or item deconstruction and repair, but we have seen bits and pieces of the gathering, processing, and crafting. Content-wise, we've seen some of what Intrepid has to offer in Phase 1, but I doubt we even see it all in the guide that Intrepid plans to give us. There is no way they're going to show us every piece of gear, every event, and every quest in this stream, but they may give us an idea of where or how these are obtainable. We have even seen the God Spike War event, and two of the three world bosses being Tumok and Firebrand, but I don't believe we've seen or even been teased the third yet. This dream though is going to be absolute hype because I mean it again it's the last one we've got until we finally have our hands on Alpha 2. Things are ramping up, the game is getting into a playable place and we are closer than we have ever been and this is the time to be excited because it's going to be a fresh look into the world of Vera things are going to be hyped up. The NDA is going to be dropped. Everybody is going to see and be able to participate and give their feedback and probably hate on it a lot too, because that's what the internet does. Which goes into my next point of going into this stream, despite what Intrepid shows us, manage those expectations. At the end of the day, content should not matter that much because every single person going into Alpha 2 should not be expecting to go into it for the content or to play a complete game. Alpha 2 is a test and should be treated as one. Give your feedback, report bugs, and help shape Ashes of Creation to be the best thing that it possibly can.